Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to get this really quick no makeup makeup look. So in other words, a no makeup makeup look means how to look like you're not wearing makeup. You are, but it's a very light every day. You just look clean, fresh, healthy glow, exactly what I'm wearing right now. Nothing too cakey or heavy. So if you'd like to know how to get this no makeup makeup look, keep watching. All right guys, before we go back to my bare face back in time, before we get too far into this video, please make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Let's get into the video. All right, so this is gonna be pretty quick and simple, you guys. I am gonna start off with a primer. You can use any primer you like. I'm specifically using the Maybelline Master Prime Primer and Base Blur and Pore Minimize. Even though I don't really care about this makeup lasting for a long time, which is sometimes why you wear a primer, um, I do want to put one on because I'd like to put a barrier between my clean skin and the makeup I'm going to pile on top of it. Piles may be a poor choice of words for today because we're not going to be wearing that much, but you know what I mean. I'm trying to protect my pores and my skin with a primer so that I'm not getting any of the makeup trapped down into my pores, not trying to clog them anymore and cause any more breakouts than I already have. P.S. I don't think my breakouts are from the makeup, in case you're wondering if you're like, well, stop wearing makeup and maybe it'll stop breaking out. I really don't think that's what it's from because I was not wearing hardly any makeup really when quarantine started and that's actually when my acne got a lot worse. So my dermatologist, frankly, thinks it's stress from having to, you know, go through the transition and the gigs of everything going on, just like you guys are. So just using my green uh, color corrector. This one is just called CC Color Corrector. It corrects red redness. I got this one on Wish, but you can use any green color corrector you want to get rid of any of that acne or redness that you might have peeking through. If you have any darkness, dark circles, dark patches, um, you can use a red color corrector to fix that. So I'm not going to use very much foundation at all. I just want to make my skin tone look even. Mine is a little uneven, patchy, discolored, whatever you want to call it. So I like to do a little bit just to help with that. I'm not going to do very much at all. That's actually going to be enough for my entire face. This is the Mary Kay Medium Coverage Foundation. If you didn't see my last video um, of my entire collection of foundation, I know, it says, I say my entire foundation and that seems like it's gonna be like excessive and why would you wanna watch that? But I think it's really informative and it's not honestly that long and I think you guys would really like it if you try checking it out. So if you haven't seen that yet, I will leave a link down in the description below. So you guys might have noticed if you've been watching my videos, I'm not using my handy dandy IT Cosmetics, uh, where are you? My star brush that I like to use. Um, I am wanting to really make this makeup thin to help it look skin-like. And I think a flat brush like this, I don't normally like to apply my foundation with this. Um, just because I think it takes a little longer to get it looking not streaky, but it's not that much longer. I mean, we're talking 30 seconds longer. That's just how lazy I normally am. <laughs> but I think this helps you to sheer out your foundation to whatever level you want to make it look skin-like enough and still give you the coverage you want and need. And that this also helps me to pat a little bit over these color corrected areas a little better so I'm not smearing and moving around any of that coverage. And then if you find like I am right now that there's still a little redness and acne, I don't know if you can see it peeking through there, I'm not going to do the whole crazy YouTuber highlighting with my concealer, but you just hit those areas that you color corrected really quickly with a concealer. It's going to be a little bit more coverage than if you just had the medium coverage foundation. 
and that should help when you go over those just to really, really make those blemishes go away completely. Um, but again, we're not gonna look like cake face. This is supposed to be very natural, like it's supposed to look like we're not make wearing makeup, right? I think we've got that pretty streak free now. I'm looking pretty blended and natural. And you can see my skin still looks very skin-like. It might look a little makeup -y just because we haven't added any of the warmth and color back into my skin, but we will fix that. And I'm gonna really quickly just take on a JS2 brush. You can use any really big fluffy powder brush that you have. Take a little loose powder and I'm just gonna set the places that I put that concealer because that is a lot more creamier than the foundation that I used and I want to make sure those stay in place. I also personally like a little powder in my t-zone just because I'm so oily but based on your skin type you can totally skip that step or do whatever you would like. Alright so next I'm going with eyeshadow. Now you might say um, Caitlin why are we doing eyeshadow? This is a no makeup makeup look. Yes I know but I have really veiny eyelids, you guys. Okay, like, look, there's like blue veins everywhere and it's not cute, okay? So if you have veiny eyelids like I do, go ahead and take a little primer. Again, it's not because we care that we need eyeshadow. We're not trying to look like we have makeup on. We don't care if it creases, but this primer helps to cover and cancel out all of those veins. Because this particular primer is very tacky, I am gonna go in with eyeshadow, but it's gonna be a very non-pigmented sheer eyeshadow. And I'm literally just putting that on to set that primer. Again, the whole reason we put primer on was to just cover the veins in our eyelids. Cause you know, we're humans, we have blood flowing places. Um, this one is kind of a gray color. It's called Pinup Girl. It's from this little Ulta freebie palette I got. I never use this shade because it's so sheer. I'm not trying to do a look. I'm literally putting one coat everywhere just to, again, set that tacky eyeshadow primer. Make sure it's not sticky or that you can't visibly see a crease in the primer itself. Kind of like I set the concealer on the face since it was creamier so it wouldn't slip and slide and move around with powder. I'm setting this eyeshadow primer I used to cover my veins with one shade of a sheer eyeshadow. You don't have to use gray, of course. You could use even your bronzer if you don't want to use an eyeshadow. You could probably use your translucent powder, whatever you want. Now we are looking a little ghost-like, so take whatever bronzer you want. I'm using the LA Colors bronzer in shade glowing and my uh, Morphe JH02 brush, very large fluffy bronzing brush, but again, use what you have guys. You don't have to use these specific things to achieve a similar outcome. And I'm not going to do like the chiseled cheekbone contour or bronzing. I just wanna add a little color back to the face so that again, we look skin-like now that we've canceled out all of the unevenness in my skin. We also canceled out any color or warmth that I had in my skin. So you want to add the little bit of that back just so you look alive and not corpse-like. And I don't chisel out the nose when I do this kind of look. I just hit it a little bit again in the chin or the jaw. I mean, just anywhere that I would naturally have a little color. I think you can see already just that little bit, how it, it brings you back to life. I actually don't do highlighter for this look. Shock, I know, but that's because I use a really luminous blush. Um, so I just use that instead of the highlighter. But I do like to go in with my Maybelline Master Chrome Metallic Highlighter and do a little inner corner of the eye highlight and brow bone. But again, I mean, this is a no makeup makeup look. This does give you a little bit of makeup sparkle and shine. Totally feel free to just skip this step completely. If you don't have time, if you don't have the motivation, you don't feel like giving the effort, whatever you guys feel like. I'm just showing you what my specific lately go-to look is. To just like feel fresh and good, but it's super low 
maintenance and it doesn't use a ton of products compared to my normal routine I'll say at least. So next I'm going to show you this glowy blush I was talking about. This is the Ciate London Matchmaker and it's kind of like you can see marbleized and it's got the highlighter and the blush in there. This is pretty pigmented so it's going to look like a lot but I have found that this fades pretty quickly throughout the day so it's okay that it's kind of Makeup be or a lot looking right now, you probably are noticing, because it'll really tone down pretty quickly. But I like it just gives you like a natural, dewy, glowy, healthy looking quality to the skin without making me look oily. My number one thing I hate is looking oily. Now I really do think you should do a little more with the eyes personally. You don't have to do eyeliner, but I think you should at least do mascara. It helps you look more awake. I am going to do a little minute of eyeliner though, and I'll be right back. Again, you could do whatever eyeliner you want. You don't have to. I'm not winging it out. I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm just doing a brown one. This is the Beauty For Real Eyeline 24 Eyeliner in shade Whiskey. So you guys can see that's not like a big difference. I just did it very, very lightly there on the top lash line. I just think it adds a little something for me. You don't have to do that at all, but I would highly recommend the next step and you might hate me for it, but this guy, eyelash curler. Um, maybe you have lashes that stick up well and you don't need to do this step, but for me, it really helps me to look awake when they are just straight up and they're quite downturned especially on the outer edges so I usually don't curl like my whole entire lash but I try to focus it on this outer corner here and if you've never used one of these you don't want to like you will hurt yourself okay and you don't want to pull you just want to lightly align it up there try not to get your eyelid because that hurts um, practice slowly at first if you need to to get some practice and then you want to do quick little clamps on the outside there and that will left lift your lash you guys can probably already see this lash versus that one's so like touching my skin basically and this one's curled up a little bit more I think you can tell more once you put mascara on when you've curled it at least I notice a huge difference in what the application of the mascara looks like um, and I do, again, I feel like if you're not going to do anything else, do this because it's a way that you're not adding any makeup, but it really just makes you look great. And I know some people too, they want to look like they're not wearing makeup, but they have a little something on. So they'll put on a false lash, no eyeshadow, no liner, no mascara. They just throw on a lash and crimp it so their natural lashes blend in with the false lash. You could do that too. I think that I have long enough lashes. I'm lucky that, um, especially with the understated eyeshadow look or no eyeshadow, um, the lashes kind of can shine without a falsy. But you use your own discretion. Do whatever you want to do. This is a tutorial, obviously, but you don't ever have to follow anybody's tutorial 100%. It's your face and body. Do what you want. See, don't you guys think that that looks like I don't know. To me, I'm just like, that could be a very natural looking fake lash. Like, that looks so much better than when I just throw on mascara without doing anything to my lash first, in my opinion. So yeah, there's my lashes, and I think they look so good. This is the Tarte Man Eater Mascara, in case you're wondering. And you could stop here if you want to. You really could. You could stop three steps ago if you wanted to, but am I going to? No. Um, because I want to do a little bit of filling in my eyebrows. I like to comb them a little first just because I don't want to overfill them. And I only want to fill in the sparse areas, so I'm going to comb them the way that I want them first before I go in with a little of this. I put a little bit here at the bottom. Just give it a nice clean ending point, fill in the front a little bit, then I fill in the tail a bit, and I just follow the natural curve of my brow here, fill in the middle with some fast strokes there, and then connect here. It's not like a crazy thick brow, but that's okay. We are going for natural. 
plus I hate it when people like overly fill in their brows. I'm sure you have seen it where they just make it like a square in the front and it's like, er, er, I don't think that looks attractive. If you do and you do your eyebrow that way, no offense. I mean, do whatever you think looks good on you, but that's not my cup of tea. I also don't like the brows that I've seen people doing lately where they're like straight up and they literally are so untamed. I guess I kind of like it somewhere in between. So then I take the spoolie side one more time and I just run it through to make sure everything's blended and looks nicely. I kind of like, just because of the way my brows grow, the front to go up and then the end of the brow to go to the side. And I want it to stay there because it won't without gel. So I use, I don't think I told you guys, that was the Wet n Wild Retractable Brow Pencil. This is the Essence Lash and Brow Gel Mascara. I just think that, again, pulls it all together a little better. And then the last thing is gloss. This is a gloss I've really been liking lately. You guys can see it is half gone already. This is the Trust Fund Beauty Lip Gloss in the shade Method to the Madness. It's really like a sheer pinky color. I don't usually wipe any foundation off that I get on my lips, so I like this because it just kind of brings back out my natural lip color. If you think you went a little too heavy with the foundation and you want to fix it, um, or if you just plain want a little refresher, you can add a little setting spray or a little uh, spray refresher. Sometimes they call them a refresher or a setting spray or whatever. It helps take away like the powderiness or the cakiness of the makeup if you did too much or it's just a refreshing feeling honestly. So I'm going to use the Too Faced Do You Fresh Glow Setting Spray. Hey guys, and here is the final look. tutorial if so make sure again before you go to like this video leave me a comment down below and please subscribe to this channel if you're new here I upload new videos every Wednesday and Sunday I hope to see you guys on the next one